Greetings, friends. There's nothing like being outside. It's like our design, our makeup, just drives us to want to be outside. At least it should, because we're not meant to be indoors constantly no. in a cubicle somewhere, never seeing the light of day and all the beauty that is outdoors. It's so good for us. It just makes you feel good. It does. Being connected and, oh, it just makes you feel really good. And there's so many benefits to being outdoors. It helps with depression. Yeah. It helps our bodies and our hormones to be able to be more in sync and more rhythm in rhythm with, with the earth. We, we need that connection. That's right. And uh, I bet you didn't know that a lot of patients who are able to actually just look outdoors and, and to see nature, it actually helps them improve their healing. I don't doubt it, so, one bit. That's pretty neat. But one of my favorite things, in addition to nature, is seeing a nice landscape, a, a field or a pasture, and just seeing an abundance of animals going across the field. When I was in my youth, I used to enjoy watching some of the nature shows and, and seeing some of the, the prairies out there in Africa with the wildebeest and just numerous yeah. covering the landscape. Yeah, hundreds of thousands. Yes, yeah, pretty neat. And that reminds me of our recent trip to Polyface Farm. And around the farm, it's like every animal that they raise on there, it's just abundance. And then one of the mornings that we were there, Mike and I, we went out to the brooder and there were just so many chicks. So many chicks. I mean, they're everywhere. They look like, you know, like people say, <laughs> little dinosaurs running around everywhere. Look at all the chicks. Have you ever seen this many chicks before? No. No? It's a lot, isn't it? Don't chase them, don't chase them. Man, this chick brooder is just like all the other areas that has animals on it. Just full of life. It's just neat to see all these chicks, isn't it, buddy? Yep. Wow. Just pick it up, just pick it up gently. Oh, you missed him. Turn around, there's some right behind you. Check out all this bedding here. That is really, really deep bedding in there. So once the chicks are done in here, just take all this, this good shit, these pine shavings mixed with the chicken poop and reuse it in the garden. You got one? There we go. I'm gonna hold it some more. Hold it gently, hold it. Pick your other hand and put it underneath. Put your other hand underneath it, okay. I didn't like Okay. It's so neat to see them moving around like that. It's like seeing a bunch of ants and just bugs moving around. There's so many of them. After checking out the brooder, we continued to walk around and it was pretty neat to see that they were raising some khaki camel ducks too. They just are raising a lot more. <laughs> yeah, a lot more than us. <laughs> well, we see some animals up here. I thought they were gonna be turkeys, but what are they, Micah? Ducks. Ducks. <laughs> we know about these. Don't touch the fence, they might be on. <laughs> and with the abundance of life there, like the chicks, the ducks and the pigs, they also have pigs, as well as the cattle, broilers, and layers, which you'll see here in a little bit. There's a lot of lot going on there at Polyface. It really is the, the farm of many faces. That's right. And uh, one of the things that we learned early on is that it's not a one-man show. It's not Joel doing it all. And he really has an, a, a team there that consists of Daniel, who manages and 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 gives direction to everyone on a day-to-day basis, including Joel, which Joel <laughs> admitted to us, uh, as well as other employees and stewards who keep this this farm and operation going. Because there is a lot that goes on at Polyface, yeah. and each morning at 6:15. 
they all get started. On our last morning there, we got to see one of the most iconic images that there is at Polyface, the millennial feather net. And we tagged along with Eli as he was doing morning chores with the layers. This morning I'm here with Eli and we are gonna be working on layers, pullets, turkeys, and some more pullets. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> So right now we're heading to, what is this called, the feather net? Yeah, the millennial feather net. Here we go, this is one of the ones that you've probably seen in various pictures from Polyface Farm. Uh, I've seen it a number of times, and it's so neat that I'm seeing it in person. So uh, it's just neat to see all the layers that they have here. Check it out. Grab a bucket. Yeah. We just try and carry two at a time. And okay. Two buckets for every three feeders. Okay. Is it okay if I do the other side? Sure. You hold that for me. <laughs> we'll switch. <laughs> oh, that scooping feed's not that good. <laughs> right over here, Nick. It's so crazy being around all those chickens. It was just like, oh, it was almost overwhelming, but it was like a feel good overwhelming seeing just that abundance of, of life all around you. And as we were feeding the chickens, you came along. Yeah. And uh, you started participating as well. Yeah, he's like, hey, why don't you carry some around and feed some birds? I'm like, fine, I can do that. Good job feeding me. <laughs> I will, I will. How's it feel being around this many chickens? I was like, this is more than we have. <laughs> it's such a neat feeling being around an abundance of just life. It really is. It's just, it's just something special about it. Eli, how many layers would you say is here? I think there's 12, 1,200. 1,200, wow. Yeah. It's like a sea of chickens. <laughs> and I must say, I was digging Eli's shirt. <laughs> oh. What's your shirt say? I saw how to pick up chicks. <laughs> I like that. I don't know if it would be appropriate for me to wear one of those. I might get in trouble with somebody. You could wear one of those. <laughs> but I really like his shirt. <laughs> how to pick up chicks. <laughs> Every four days we move the whole structure. Okay. And then every two days 
within the within the net, it gets scooted forward. Okay. To kind of make sure the birds spread out over the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. And then it saves us one day of of net moving. Okay. And then each night, do you close those up so they don't go inside of them? After we collect eggs, we just close them up. Okay. So you just feed them once a day. Yep. And uh, gather the eggs. Gather eggs at like four o'clock. Yeah. Yep. When they're done laying. Yep. And all the water is automatic. Okay. So you don't have to worry about that, except for when you have to move it. That's the only time you right. have to worry about that. Right. Right. Okay. Right. After we finished up at the feather net, we next moved up to some chicken tractors that they're raising barred rock layers in that they're going to move into another iconic piece at Polyface, the egg mobile. And uh, these brawlers and these chicken tractors actually, you had your chance to move a chicken tractor for the first time. Yes, it was the last one in the line, and I hadn't done one. I wanted to see how heavy it was, so I was like, Eli, can I move this one? He said, sure, but I was quickly regretting that because it was on an uphill incline, and the grass in front of it was really tall, and yeah, I was having a hard time. But I wasn't going to let that thing beat me, <laughs> and I moved it the no. whole way by myself. Yeah, you did a great job. Way to go. Face, they have stewards that are both male and female there and they, they all do the chores as they're they're capable of doing and uh, the females move the chicken tractors yeah. as well and uh, it's pretty neat to see that everybody there works hard and that's one of the common threads when you ask them really? about poly face they, they say they work hard and, and then you can tell that they really enjoy it You got it. I believe in you. Carrying buckets, I can do the thing. <laughs> May not be a master mover on one of these things, but I can definitely carry a bucket. After the, the chicken tractors, next moved over to the turkeys with Eli. And I had never been around that many turkeys, just like I hadn't been around that many chickens either. And it was so me just hearing all the <laughs> <laughs> You hear that? Those are turkeys. Just check out all these turkeys. Sure. sure. <laughs> the turkeys seem to never learn about the electric fence. Really? So they'll just go right over it. If uh -huh. you, 
push it down like this or whatever. Uh, especially right near them. Yeah, it's it can be bad. So. Like when you first start moving them, they just they just all got out. Oh wow. <laughs> <It was bad. laughs> okay. Look at that. <laughs> Wow. That's not like chicken grit. I mean, those are stones right there. Wow. And they eat that no problem. Yeah, they'll eat, they'll eat two bags of this wow. at least in the next two days. And how often do you give them grit? Uh, I think we should give them grit every day. Okay. Like just one bag. Okay. We didn't give them grit yesterday, so I gave them two bags. Today. Okay. Um, so you give them grit more than you give chickens grit? Yes. Okay. Yeah. They just, I never knew that, but when I got here, they're like, we got to keep, keep feeding them grit and all that. Like, yeah, so, so we, we feed them a ton. These boys. And girls, they'll get processed pretty soon. I don't know how old they are exactly, but yeah, they look pretty close. Yeah. Now we will uh, poly face sell these as mostly Thanksgiving birds, or yeah, okay, yeah. I can see here this is their their shelter. This gives them some uh, roosting bars to get on. Really basic. Just a covering over top. Yeah, I mean, they seem to do fine in the weather, in the rain and stuff, but okay. the shade, the shade really helps them out when it's 95, you know, um, and they like to roost, so it doesn't have to be much, but it, it really helps them out. So. One of the things that I've learned since I've been homesteading is you don't need really elaborate housing sure. for your, your animals. A lot of people have it in their mind that they need these, these really neat things that you'll see in catalogs, but yeah. they don't need that. In, in nature, they don't have that. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, turkeys, they don't care. No. <laughs> they just want to be in the shade a little bit. So. Now we got to feed them and uh, check the water, and then we're good to go. Mm -hmm. Some buckets over, I can just carry put them to put them in. Another thing that stood out to me at Polyface is the housing that they have for their animals. They're not really complex or super fancy. They're really simple and basic, like the turkeys just had a, a covering for them, as well as the ducks. Probably the most complex one there is the feather net, but you don't have to have these super neat, these catalog chicken coops to raise your animals in. You don't need this really fancy pink chicken coop. But there's nothing wrong with that if you have a pink chicken coop. <laughs> or red or blue, whatever. The main point is you don't have to have something super fancy to raise your animals in and to farm or homestead. So that's one of the things that it was neat for me to see at, at Polyface. After we finished with the turkeys, we next moved down to another set of pullets. Take the dolly out, you just do the exact opposite of when you put it in. So I'm going to pry up with this dolly, lift up with my left hand, and just pick it up, step out. I didn't even really feel that with my body, so. All right, let's 
got an idea behind it. Sweet. My turn. My turn. <laughs> So that was our morning chores with Eli. We next went back and did a number of other things around the farm like processed chickens as well as got to hang out with Joel Salton and him going over the cattle with me, which that's a video for another time. But later on, I was able to go out back to the same birds that we were at earlier and gather the eggs with Sarah. So Sarah, do you gather, do you um, gather the eggs same time every day here? Around four o'clock. Around four o'clock, okay. May I carry a basket too? Or? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> regular eggs, the ones that are pretty clean. Okay. And we put the dirty eggs in the red basket. Okay. Just so that it's easier to sort. Gotcha. gathers the duck eggs, my daughter gathers the chicken eggs, actually no, it's the other way around. My son gathers the chicken eggs, my daughter gathers the duck eggs, so I, have, I haven't had to do it in a while. <laughs> These ones are the ones that follow the cows. Okay. And the feather net um, doesn't follow the cows, so these ones have a little bit more of a range. Gotcha. And are these a different breed for a particular reason? Or are they ones that maybe kind of scratch around a little bit better? Or? I think they just rotate through the breed. Okay. So I don't think there's a particular reason why these ones are a different breed than the feather. Okay. So I must admit, this was a really neat experience seeing their whole poultry set up in its entirety pretty much and see how they have a system for everything. Even the four-wheeler that we were transporting the eggs that we had collected on, even 
the the basket or crate or whatever that you, they had it set up on the four-wheeler so that way the egg baskets went on there perfectly they could fit all four of them on there it's pretty neat they just have systems everywhere on this homestead I and mean, this farm and no wonder why it, it runs so well and they're so successful there but uh it's pretty neat yeah it's got a lot of knowledge a lot of knowledge gained over the years there to make things easier and speaking of systems and designs joel is coming out with a new book and you could pre-order it now we'll leave the link in the show notes below but it has diagrams and instruction manual fully colored and what over 500, over pages, 500 pages of how to build things that he has on his farm like the feather net so highly re recommend checking it out. I plan to get a copy and you can get yours too in the show notes and below. And right now it's $20 off if you pre-order it. Yeah. So I will link that to, to what you need. Overall, this time that we had there at Polyface was just absolutely amazing. It really just a wonderful time and a really neat learning experiences and uh, just a neat opportunity to also spend time with, with the staff there, the, the stewards. We even had the opportunity to share a meal, a group meal, with everyone there, and that was so nice. It's so cool. Just the camaraderie with everyone, and you know, there's nothing like just having a meal with somebody. Yeah, so. definitely a group of people I definitely enjoy being around. Yeah. And then after the meal, we had a chance to chat with Eli again and to ask him about his experience there at Polyface. Uh, my name is Eli Custer. I'm from Minnesota. I've been a steward here at Polyface for uh, about three and a half months since May 1st. And you know, I came in here from, I worked on a big feedlot in South Dakota actually. And so I came in with all this experience of how to drive tractors and, and how to work cattle and everything like that, you know, different from everyone else. Um, but I came here to learn as much as I could about um, the, how, how to make money doing this in a scalable fashion um, and more than that, now that I've learned is, is just how, how to lead teams, how to develop, um, uh, yeah, it's just watching Eric and Daniel teach and lead us as a big group and, and the communication aspect of it. Um, but then there's all kinds of nuances that, like, I can't even explain what, what I've learned from Daniel. Yeah. So how do you plan to apply some of the things that you've had, the experiences you've had, things you've learned from those guys? Um, when you go back home? Or... It's hard to say. It's really hard to say. You know, I, I, I'm, I love the production of it, but okay. my, my passion is for teaching other people about it. Awesome. So I, I, don't, I don't know how that's applied. I'm planning on staying here for another year as an apprentice. Oh, that's great. And, uh, and we just found out about that last week, so it's Fantastic. pretty exciting, pretty Congratulations. new. Congratulations. Um, as far as somebody that may be considering wanting to become a steward here at some point, what would you say to them? Yeah, I mean, if you have any interest in, in farming at all, just apply. Um, come check out. We do two-day checkouts. I think this year they're in December, but it's too late to sign up now. But for like the 2022 season, um, if you have any interest at all, come check it out. It'll be a real experience. Uh, a lot of hard work, but you learn you learn all the basics, like how to drive four or uh, manual manual trucks and uh, how to pick up a chicken but if you even have experience like I did uh, you, you learn all, all kinds of different stuff if, if you're willing to um, and then you have this connection with all these people here and it's just a great experience really so you're not standing around watching Joel and Daniel and them do things you're actually hands-on this whole time you're here yeah I mean for the first week I think we were pretty much standing there I was like a giant field trip you know <laughs> but yeah, as much as you're willing to jump in and, and do the things, you'll just, you get to do them. There we go. And they trust you to do it, so it's cool. Awesome. 